guys, it's Miss Gilliam here, and I am here at the Anti-Monopoly Drugstore, which is one of the two speakeasies in Ocala. I am so excited to give you guys a tour of the place. I actually am going to be meeting with the manager. His name is Pablo, and he so graciously let me come here. He said that he's going to give me a tour of the place. He's going to give me some stuff about the history. We're going to talk about speakeasies, and he said that he's going to mix up a little something non-alcoholic, of course, for me to try while we are here. So, um, guys, sit back, relax, get ready for some speakeasies history I am so so excited for you guys to see everything and let's get started let's get started we're gonna go undercover in the speakeasy and then zoom in on the speakeasy part. I thought you, okay okay so Pablo do you want to explain what this is so a speakeasy is an illegal bar, or a bar that is selling um, alcohol illegally but without a license. And so most of them are all hidden behind some kind of contraption or some way that you can hide kind of the front door. And so this is our front door to our speakeasy. It's, it's dressed up like a bookshelf. And so what you would do is on a Thursday, Friday, or Saturday night when we're open, you would come here and knock three times on the door. And that door guy will open the door back. I like that it goes in. Come on, what? I'm gonna try not to fall down the stairs because yeah. so we got some stairs here. Okay, this is actually my favorite part. Actually, here, get this sign right here. It says "Interesting Speakeasy," and that door was open. <laughs> oh, <Hello>. hi! <laughs> this uh, sign says "Interesting Speakeasy." Are you going up here? Yes. Sir. Okay. Oh, no. Sorry, you're good. No worries. Hi, Kelly. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> so this sign says "Interesting Speakeasy." That's really cool. But um, here, let's go in here first of all. And then, do you want to like explain? You can go up there, Maya. Yeah. Want to explain this wall? Yeah, yeah. So the door guy will sit right here, and he has a marker with him. And he, you give him the password, and he lets you up, and he gives you a marker so you can write your name on the wall. And so anybody that cares to is able to, able to write their name on our wall. And now, typically, in a normal speaking scene, you wouldn't want to incriminate yourself that way. But you know, we're a modern. Topic, no, so. yeah. So it's yeah. yeah, it's illegal. This whole area is supposed to be illegal. So. Um, you wouldn't want to put your name anywhere. Hey, look, we found a name right there. That's <laughs> my name. Here, let me. Really? Yeah, <laughs> it's my name. That's funny. I've been here before, so I actually put my name. So, anyways, but as you can see, you got like brick and stuff. This was already here? Yes, this was the original brick. Actually, this was one building, and on the other side is another building. So, this whole area was an alley before. Okay, awesome. Cool. We're going up the stairs. And then you, we can like talk like Absolutely. this way. We try to give them, um, we try to give some people um, an experience they haven't had before. So we, we lean more towards um, um, sophisticated, uh, sophisticated experience. So we play um, classical lounge music. You know, we have things like um, Amy Winehouse, Portis Head, um, Postmodern Jukebox, so what kind of a modern twist on old school music. Okay. Um, not that we don't play like club music or dance music. There's not like a dance environment. It's a place where you can sit down and have a conversation with your friend or your, um, your spouse or whatever, and had enjoy a great drink. And right. so the the main point of our bar is a, um, a craft cocktail experience. And so we, I squeeze all fresh juice every day, lemon and lime juice every single day. Um, and nothing is pre-mixed, and so everything is made uh, to order as you order it. And so drinks can take a little longer than they would anywhere else, really, or at a regular bar, you know. But that's because everything is just made from scratch as, as we go, you know. And so. What you can expect is to have a great cocktail. You know, that no matter what you like, I try to have a good variety of things on the on the cocktail list for everybody's taste. You know, and so a great cocktail in an in environment where you can enjoy some nice groo grooving tunes. You know, and, and kind of hang out and, and enjoy your company, enjoy company with your friends. You know, not, not really a or a date place. You know, it's not really a place like a party place or a club place. Right. 
Yeah, and that's the kind of vibe that I was getting. Um, but we're reading The Great Gatsby right now, and right now I'm in the midst of chapter four, which is where um, Gatsby actually takes the narrator to a speakeasy. Um, and he meets, um, there's a guy there, um, his name is Meyer Wolfsheim, but he like rigged the World Series, and he's a bootlegger, meaning that he sells alcohol illegally, that's where he gets his um, um, like money from. And um, he takes Nick to a speakeasy, and I think they're just behind like, an elevator. It's like either behind an elevator or like behind a bookcase next to an elevator. Um, but that's what they're doing. Like he, he goes there and it's like everybody kind of shows up and they end up seeing people that they know. Um, and then they like run into some people like with some awkward conversations and stuff. But like the narrator Nick talks about how like that's basically what everyone's doing. It's like it's like a meeting place. It's not like a party place. It's more like a meeting place for people to kind of meet and have conversation and stuff. Do you have any food at all, or is it just drinks? We do serve some food. Yeah, the, the kitchen from the lot, the lodge downstairs. We have, we have a specific menu for us. Only five items, and we also offer the lodge late night menu after our menu ends at eleven o'clock. Go on. Well, the, this is the entire room right here, okay. so there is no more to it. Uh, upstairs is the loft, but that's where my bathrooms are, so we have a door here so people can go up and stuff. But um, yeah, there's no more than to this room right here. Okay. Um, so what else? I mean, yeah, I mean, it's not really uh, any, any place else to go besides here. Okay. Wait, look at the ceiling. The ceiling is wet. Mm -hmm. And uh, the brick is all original. Okay. I like it in here. I really like it in here. Thank you. I don't know. I feel like it's cool. Yeah. Like, well, yeah, that, that's kind of the thing about it. Like, modern speakeasies are all legal, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, um, but we're, we're hearkening back to a style. Because, see, speakeasies in the 1920s kind of changed bartending mm -hmm. for, because back before speakeasies, um, the liquor was so good that uh, Americans in particular used to drink a lot of spirit forward cocktails, things like the Mancini and the Manhattan, which is just uh, spirit and vermouth, you know? And vermouth really fell out of favor in, in, during Prohibition because you couldn't really get vermouth in America because it right. came from Europe, you know? Right. And so the bartenders started mixing a lot more juice into their drinks and a lot things to kind of mask the, the flavor of the moonshine, which was very rough to drink. Right. And so we started, the margarita came about during that time. The, um, Havana, Cuba had a big uh, cocktail renaissance where they invented the, because uh, people would fly over there to have drinks in Cuba, you know? Right. It was just a uh, hop, skip, and jump away. And so they, they came out with drinks like Daiquiri and Mojito during right. that time. And so we, we got like the South Side, the, uh, the Mary Pickford, a bunch of classic cocktails came around during that time, but a very juice forward, juice centered, a lot of mixer. Right. And so it, it kind of changed the way that we bartend as, as, a, as a country overall. You know? Right. So, guys, if you hear that, the 1920s, the prohibition happening, it didn't only just revolutionize like habitual drinking, but it also revolutionized the way that we make drinks, the way that they're bartended, the way that they're transported, all that stuff. And one of the biggest points that we point out whenever we're talking about prohibition class is that prohibition, it only prohibited the um, buying, selling, production of it. It didn't really stop the consumption. Like there's really no law against the consumption of right, it right. during the prohibition era. Right. So it's only illegal to make it, sell it in person. Right. And so the proprietor of the speakeasy would be in legal trouble but not the drinker. Exactly. And so some proprietors actually came up with a workaround. So it would be like a club. So you would join my club. I would give you a membership card and that the membership card you would pay to see some kind of event. Like a, I would have like a tiger or a pig or some kind of wild animal. You come pay to see the animal and you get a complimentary cocktail. Yes. You know, and so yeah. I'm not selling you a cocktail, I'm not selling you alcohol, I'm just giving it to you for free. You're paying to see the pig. Right. Or whatever it is, you know? Yes, exactly. So that'd be cool if you had like a picture of alcohol in here. Do you? No, that's not. I do have some alcohol in trivia. I actually have one of one of my cocktails on the menu is called the South Side that was um, created because of Al Capone. Because Al Capone uh, ruled the south side of Chicago, yep. and his gin was um, of a lower quality than his competitors to the north. Mm -hmm. And so his gin had to be, they mixed, his bartenders at his clubs mixed it with uh, lime, sugar, and, and mint to, to kind of help hide the flavor of the gin. And it, that's, that's the modern cocktail for the south side. It's one of the most popular cocktails here. Oh, okay. I'm about to try that. Not you guys. You can't. You can't have it. Not until 21. Okay. Um, can you mix something for us? Uh, let's see what I got here. It's not going to be alcoholic, guys. By the way, I'm going to do that as a disclaimer. If you are watching this, I do not condone any type of underage drinking, and no underage drinking has been done. Well, I mean, I'm not underage, so I guess it doesn't matter. But my point is, I don't condone underage drinking. Only when you're 21. So. Okay, yay! Um, is the stuff on this little uh? Wait, Maya, I'm gonna try this zoom thing and see if it works. Is the stuff on that? Okay. Something I need for sure. Is this like just for decoration? 
That yes. dresser? Yeah. It is. Okay. <laughs> That's what I thought. Maya, are you enjoying yourself? It's 4.39 p.m. Okay. All right. We're going to have a little segment for Maya. What do you think about this experience, Jemaya? It's all right. It's all right? Is, is there anything that you think is cool about any of this? Yeah. Maya, explain yourself. Um, I don't know. I mean, it looks nice in here. I wonder what kind of food they got. You want to know what kind of food they have? Yeah. I don't think they can make us any food today. But. I don't know they're not going to make us none. <laughs> So have you yourself tried any of your drinks? Oh, all of them. Okay. Uh, all of them. I mean, I have to. I have to know that they taste good. And not only try them, but I mean, I'll, I have a straw specifically just to try drinks while I'm making them. Right. Now. Yep. But um, every drink that I make, I'll, I'll make one and I'll, and I'll try the entire thing. Like if it's good on the first sip, I'll have the entire thing to make sure it's still good on the last sip. Because a drink will tend to evolve in the glass. Sometimes it'll be good on the first sip and not on the last one. Or maybe the first sip won't be that good, but by the time you finish it, you're like, wow, I love this drink. Right. You know, and so it's important to try the entire thing and be there for the whole experience. Right, okay. I'm cheersing to you. Cheers. Boom. Cheers to the mixologist. Um, well, um, one of the things that Speak Easy's, um, that are, don't get a lot of credit for is integration. Uh, there was a, uh, back then, you know, as... I'm sure you're aware um, there was a lot of segregation in a business all over the country. Yep. But speakeasies, is because they were illegal to begin with, um, there was a lot more integration. So um, that, that was the time when women got the right to vote six months after prohibition came into effect. Yep. And so women were, that was the first time women sat at a bar to enjoy a drink. That was uh, the, the word dating came around during that time because the singles coming up speakeasies, you know. Um, black people, white people, Hispanic people drank at a speakeasy um, shoulder to shoulder because we were all breaking the law. Right. And so it kinda, I, that kind of helped bring uh, not only a bar culture, but I feel uh, American culture forward a little bit. Even though it was completely illegal during the time, it was something that I feel kind of helped us out of the way. Right. Oh my gosh, wow, I didn't even think about that. Um, that's awesome. It was like a, a kind of like a hub for integration. Yeah. You know, um, and obviously, I mean, uh, there was a huge focus on women and women being independent and women's suffrage and all that stuff too. But all of that stuff was going, we actually were reading um, in chapter four today, um, and he was like, yeah, he was like in the Rolls Royce with Gatsby and he was driving to the speakeasy. He didn't know he was going, but he was talking about how there was another yellow car and it had like three Negroes in it. And, he, and then like the kids were like, well, he's racist. I'm like, he's not necessarily racist. It's just it was normal. Yeah. To say Negro back then. Right. Now, like if you say Negro, it's offensive. Like it, it's offen it was offensive back then too. Right. But like if you say that now, then it, then it's like people say it to intentionally be offensive. Or if you say that, it's like, well, okay, like right. why you say that? And speakeasies were a big hub for jazz music as well back in the late right. twenties. You know that was rising up at the time. Right, jazz music and the Harlem Renaissance. Guys, this looks so cool. Like, oh my god. Okay, cool. Ooh. Ooh. I'm adding egg white. Is that an egg? I was gonna say, uh an egg. what? <laughs> so but it's just the white. So I separate the egg from the white, throw out the the yolk, and add an egg white to the drink. What? Is this eggnog? <laughs> it's not. Okay. I'm about to drink an egg white. Oh my gosh. Oh wait, it's not alcoholic, so she can drink some too, right? It is not alcoholic, this time. Oh my gosh. Maya, you're not allergic to eggs, are you? No, silly. I just wanted to make sure, because, I mean. I'm definitely not allergic to eggs, and I've eaten them my whole life. Well, you don't really, you had a period of time where you actually didn't like eggs, so. Yeah, I just didn't like them. And I'll dump the ice. And I think that's just a chill glass. Okay. Oh, he just did that chill glass. Cool. Awesome.
Ooh, my! I needed to get a picture of this drink once I have it. Where's my phone? I have no idea. Yet. What is this that you're garnishing it with? Nutmeg. Nutmeg. Fresh grated nutmeg. I was about to say it's like not even like already no, it's grated. It's like a whole nutmeg. Ooh. So this cocktail, one of mine, is called the citrus creme, and it's a play on another cocktail called the citrus cream, but there is no cream in it, so I call it the creme. Okay. Enjoy. Okay! Maya, you gotta come try this with me. Why? No, I gotta sip it first. It smells good. <laughs> it looks like eggnog. It does look like, she loves eggnog, so that's why she wants to try it first. All right, Maya, first sip. All of my kids are gonna see this, so. <laughs> that's pretty good. Do you like it? It's interesting. All right, now you gotta film me trying it. All right, guys. Again, a picture. This, this is a non-alcoholic drink, so I don't think I can take a picture while I'm filming, though. Oh man. Oh, that does taste good. It tastes really good. <laughs> it's like it's got like citrusy undertones in it. What's in it? It is uh, coconut syrup that I make, orange juice, lemon juice, and honey with an egg white. Orange juice, lemon juice, honey, egg white, and coconut syrup. Okay, and what is it yeah. called so I can come get it when I come back? Citrus creme. Citrus creme. So technically that's going to come out for like another two weeks. But it'll be on the menu soon. You're welcome to come ask, but I already have all the ingredients for it. Did you hear that, guys? This is an exclusive <coughs> drink that's going to be on the new menu. <laughs> Your face. It's just the stuff on top. It smells like seasoning. Yeah, it's not Meg. It's not Meg. <laughs> Alright guys, this is my YouTube I'm channel now. Oh, I bet it's so fun being a freaking YouTuber. Right. I, 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 mean, I would imagine that it's kind of awkward and weird at first, but this looks pretty fun. It's giving. It's freaking giving right now. And the lighting, don't do her. Anyways. Okay, so right now it's our freaking speakeasy, guys. We've been here for what? An hour? Let's check the time like YouTube would do. 506. It's not gonna focus. Boring. But yeah. So, I'm hoping that hour, and we're about to leave. She's gonna get me food, and it's gonna be the biggest meal I can get with the biggest shake I can get. You guys believe, and you better put this in the end at the credits. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? But yeah. I wanna, I kinda like look you in a vlog and call it just to see like what it's like to be a vlogger. I'm putting it in the drive through line, too. Yo. Um. Yeah. There's gonna be a message for me at the end of the video, so you better put it in. But um, comment down below or like just drop a freaking like if you want her to do a drive driving with me video on her YouTube vlog channel. Let her know if you want her to do a drive with me video because that's some good content. Okay, bye. I don't want to cut it off. <laughs> well, uh, this stairwell here. There we go. <laughs> Maya said, these are names and names of Ocala. Ooh, and I need to get this big old chandelier. Yeah, we can go out. You do! This is gonna be the cutout footage that you're gonna post at the very end of the video. It's broken.